Do you need help? They're taking away people's hopes and dreams and their self-fulfillment. I think self-fulfillment matters. I don't care if I'm the It's all about selling drugs. If you are a child, you better not smile, because they'll take you to the quack. But you want the evil crack. So if you are a child, you better not smile, because they'll take you to the quack. But you want Prozac. Imagine all the people with chemical lobotomies. Eugenics never left gone. Mental hygienists just went more and more on the ground. Second World War Through the medical profession To sterilize the fucking world Did I just fuck it To join the brain mutilation culture Welcome to the Everyday Psych Victim Project Podcast Hosted today by myself, Daryl Brown An extensive institutionalized childhood mental health protege Of England's national health system Now chemically castrated And stripped of my sexuality as an adult from the drugs I write about sterilizing the mentally ill and campaign to stop drugging the children. Hosting alongside me across the Prozac contaminated pond is founder of the Everyday Psych Victims Project, a unique place where as blacked out in the media, everyday victims of the abuse of psychiatry and mental health will be able to anonymously share their wisdom and experiences. If you would like to join us as a guest on the show, please get in touch with the show. What do you think, your name for it, yeah? So it's Everyday Psych Victims Project, right? Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's my website for that. And people can upload their stories by um, written stories, right? Yeah, they write the stories. I didn't want images on there, so it wouldn't be too like detail. But yeah, it'd be like their written stories could go on there, and they could see views or report them and stuff, <clears throat> and yeah. for different countries and categories. So I was trying to get that on there. That's really that's good. To- really it's really nice that you've done that yeah i'm trying to do that and i'd really like that because i think it would probably make things a lot better if it's public and so people could just browse and look on there instead of sending it all to these complaint facilities like public health department or chr and those other places where they don't even listen to you and they just kind of ignore the investigation but if you just put it online for regular people to look up i think that would make a much more big difference and I know that it's kind of like set up how like Everyday Sexism Project has like all the stories on there too. So it would be like that only for sight victims. Oh yeah. So You could maybe even yeah. recruit people to interview off of there as well. So you could get a bunch of like people from different, with a bunch of people of their different stories. You could ask them if they want to be on the podcast thing too. Yeah, I don't have comments on there, but I could get timelines maybe later if I get enough money or donations or something. I could get timeline posting and so people could log in on there. Like my other website has profiles and things and timelines, so it's more like social media. I was thinking of doing that with Everyday Site Victims Project, but like so then you could get on a timeline interview from there. But the main page, it doesn't let anyone like reply to them or anything, but if they contact you, then they could get interviewed for sure. Like, I get contacted sometimes on the Facebook page, but not that often. But it's, like, kind of like, what can you do? There's nothing you can really do except for exposing it. That's kind of, like, the whole purpose. The Rarity Psych Victims Project is exposing it all to the public because right now it's just kind of unknown, and it's really kept under wraps with the media, as you know. Yeah, yeah. They don't report things or just report for mental health, like, for, pro it and not against it. But I think with obviously with all these victims, they're just totally ignored by the media. They're just called like, oh, they're mental. So they don't even reply to them or they can't understand what they're writing. But if it's like posted online, then you could see it all right there, all the complaints. And then you'd be like, there is something wrong with psychology and mental health and stuff. And I'm the only one who's like that extreme against the whole psychology thing, all of it, because I know that therapists are bad. No societies are just as bad. The counselors at school are just as bad. They throw people out, you know, and call them, diagnose them with things. Or teachers are told to do that kind of stuff too. Like yeah, yeah, it's all the same industry pushing the same. Yeah, agenda. it's all the same, and it's not just the psychiatrists. They're always like, it's just them. It's not them. It's like all of them. And I know that one hospital in Washington, they had no psychiatrists at all. All they have were nurse practitioners who obviously they studied in psych psychology 
they took that mental health rotation, whatever, psych for rotation. And so just because that they were taught in that, they were the people, the nurse practitioners, and then they had a hospital psychologist that would go to the court with their lawyer. And it was like, they had no psychiatrist, they just had a psychologist and nurse practitioners who were studied, who had studied under psychology and stuff under that rotation. So they didn't even have psychiatrists. So I know it's not just them, it's the whole field. And just yeah. because you have mental health workers, you have EMTs, emergency medical technicians, you know, ambulance people, you have all these people who are working all together. It's not just a few people like at the top. It's just PsyDs are also pretty much at the top too. Like they're pretty high up there because they're yeah. have a doctor. Yeah, yeah, happens yeah. and general Absolutely. practitioners here give out drugs yeah. as expanded. They're just like, they're not psychiatrists at all. Yeah, um, even general practitioners there, they can't do that here yet, but they're trying, they're, <laughs> I think they're going to try to. Yeah, but you've already got the psychologist giving people drugs, isn't it? And yeah. So it's yeah. very, <laughs> it's pretty much the same things. You've got just as big, if not bigger, a drug problem, the same as we have. And it's all just pushing the agenda to, the agenda services the cause of selling drugs and breaking people down isn't it but selling drugs is obviously like really easy way to do that <laughs> people have invested in their in their drugs program as well yeah i know it's like disgusting it's all of them it's not just a few of them i mean i understand that they're awful so it's a part of the whole thing like of course i post anti site psychiatry stuff too as well as but then I also say anti-psychology anti-mental health there's no anti-psychology or anti-mental health organizations out there at all except for mine apparently because I looked and I don't see them anywhere it yeah just... no it's true we've been lying <laughs> that the whole but psychology thing is not to do with um is separate from the drugs and it's just to do with talking therapies let alone yeah, the idea that talking, talking therapies just, doesn't really prove that it cures people either. It doesn't really yeah. show much to do with recovery rights. You could say open dialogue does, but that's mainly but just because they don't use drugs. <laughs> yeah. And, and they I have, have. A facilitators of support that I think is going away from psychotherapy. It's not like in the direction of psychotherapy. It's more just like people can speak to those people basically as if they were their family and not judge them for their experiences so that's actually pushing further away from the whole psych um, psychotherapy aspect of it do you know what I mean well they um, I don't know if you've heard of open dialogue yeah I've looked I, I actually post to them a lot but I just I've heard of them I know they did it in North Finland but they have a Facebook group but it's like I know they talk people about they claim they had schizo or whatever, and they are able to talk their way out of it. But it's like, but then they use some drugs up there too, like some, yeah. but not forever permanent. But still, it's like, yeah, that's a good. So you finally have some proof because I know a lot of people. This one person I talked to, they're like, oh, I was hearing voices, and so then, but then they're so angry, all, and like they're not happy that they want to die because in the end. They're like, oh, I used to be so much like carefree and so much d so different before the drugs and everything, and then but they've been on it for years with these drugs, and they're like, no, if I stop the drugs, I'll hear voices or whatever. Apparently, they're pretty bad or whatever, but it's like now they don't want to even live or anything. They just they don't care about life. They hate life. They hate everything. They think they're a failure and everything. And all they do is they go, oh, I'm going to talk to the doctor, the psychiatrist. They don't call them psychiatrists. They call them doctors. And it's yeah. like, that's the worst thing to call a psychiatrist a doctor because then you're giving them credibility, right? Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> call them what they are, yeah. And so you know, I was like, why do just you know stop the drugs and see and it's like they never heard of open dialogue or hearing voices network or these other people and i'm like well you know it's obviously isn't it better to hear voices than want to hate your life or end your life all the time like obviously it's because of the drugs because they used to be more carefree and happier and they didn't gain they gain weight from the drugs too even if they're just taking it one time a week they still gain weight so it must be some kind of huge dose or something that's so like 
it takes away their emotions and their want to do anything. Isn't that far worse than hearing voices, even if they're evil or whatever? I think it's way worse to hate your life and want to die. Like, seriously, you're in your 30s and you think you're old and want to die and have no hope or anything. Clearly, it's way worse to have hopelessness, even if the whole mental health goal is to prevent suicide, supposedly. They're like, they claim that they're the only ones who pay attention to it or care about it, which isn't true. It shouldn't be true. There should be other fields, like, I think motivationology would be a good one to do that. But it's like a non-coercive, non-drug one, because obviously you can't motivate people with a drug. But it's like... (laughs) 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 like, No. And it's like, you know, wouldn't it be better if they weren't hopeless and, like, even if they heard stuff, like... There should be ways to talk out of it, like, some way without mental health, without diseases language and all that internalization, and be, like, happy with, like, it's a gift or something. Like, I guess Hearing Voices Network, they like to say that, but it's like, how can they sit there and be like, how can they think that they're doing something good by their taking away someone's voices, but then they're making them want to die? And they're always like, to me, yours went away and blah, 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 because they kept claiming I had psychosis or whatever. But it's like, no, it's just seriously, it's way, it would have been way better if they never got into psychology or drugs or anything, and they were much happier, and then they wouldn't have tolerated everything, and they're like, but then they don't get it, and they just so, like, I don't know, they don't get the whole negative spiral, it's like, What's better, hearing stuff or being hopeless from drugs and getting all kinds of physiological effects like gaining weight or, you know, losing physical things? Like, it's much better without it. I just can't believe that. Like, they're just selling this product. They just want people to suffer over it and they don't even test it. It's like, or they do, but they don't even care. Like, they know it's not good and they just, they let all those yeah, people Yeah, they lie laugh. about it. All the, they, they pretend that the side yeah. effects don't exist, they say, or they, they minim, their job of them is to minimalize, minimize the existence of side effects. They say stuff like, oh, all drugs have a long list of side effects. Oh, the drug companies, they have to p- write down everything that's reported during the trial. So, you know, that's why there's just really a long list because um, they just have to report anything that's reported um, during the trials. So they're kind of saying it's if the drug companies are just doing a favor and the the effects, the so-called side effects aren't supposedly real or could be due to something else or, you know, they're not that significant, possibly not even real because um, the drug companies are doing us all a favor because they just have a duty to write down some, anything that's reported and they just put it on this supposedly long list of random effects that apparently don't happen. That's how the doctors, you know, they they have all different methods for selling and minimizing because they're trained by the drug companies within this country. It's CPD training points are part of it, and um, they they really um, do a good job of pretending like this is medications, not drugs, and it's safe and effective. We're the experts. Um, you know, they minimize the side effects by saying, like, rubbish, like, oh, they just have to write down everything that's reported. So it's like they're doing you a favor and these things don't really happen. And it, do you know what I mean? Yeah, they try to ignore the 90% of people that just drop out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they completely, that's how they cover up that, by methods like that. And the doctors are just covering it up for them. They're defending the drug companies while they're selling all these people drug genocidal drugs that are killing them everything. And the first thing they do, if anyone has any of these, like his voices or whatever, the first thing they do is they drug people up to the hilt. And the drugs can cause chronic voices and psychosis and stuff. And and aside from like trying to drug away a problem or something you perceive as a problem. Yeah, it's like ridiculous. It doesn't work. Your body usually fights back most of the time anyway. Uh, um, your brain fights back to being drugged with psychoactive chemicals, you know what I mean? Psychoactive drugs. Your body will fight back and tries to adjust. That's why your serotonin dopamine receptors readjust. It, 
you know the ones the studies where they done on autop autopsy with people with schizophrenia and stuff they basically just found because everyone gets drugged unilaterally that um, the receptors people had way more receptors on, on autopsy that had schizophrenia and they couldn't differentiate it basically was because they'd all been drugged with these dopamine drugs the psycho ones they call psychotic drugs everyone had been drugged with it that's the way we do for for so many years we all just get drugged straight away if anyone like says they hear voices or whatever I know exactly just straight away they don't even wonder where it comes from <laughs> yeah like yeah. electrical signals can make it too and they don't even ask about that stuff. Like, what about target individuals and gang stop people? I don't know if you know what that is, but I had some stuff that was kind of like that before in the past, but not anymore. But it's like, even like voice to skull like stuff where they could use electrical signals and put it in your head to do yeah. things and stuff. They're like close minded that. as shit. Like, nutrition could play a factor. The electrical activity around us all the time, like you say, could, could play a factor. But you know, you, nutrition is a very basic thing that they don't they don't do anything of. <laughs> you know, they're very narrow-minded. Like they are, people have been incarcerated for completely real things that doctors have just not believed them on. You know, it's really narrow-minded and dangerous, unscientific, and most importantly, whereas at least other doctors have some sort of um, realism and science attached to it <laughs> yeah there is it's like even science can be torture people are like oh it's not pseudoscience but science can still be science and still be torturous like that's why they experiment on rats and animals and stuff they don't want to always experiment on people but they do with psychology and all that stuff they with psyops and stuff they experiment on real people like human beings and then so people can think oh it's pseudo but it is science they're just it's just wrong science it can be the wrong science doesn't mean it's pseudo like it could be a barbaric and torturous science it just means that it's not developed or anything I don't even really get it like <clears throat> how nobody can even get how how horrible it is like oh you can say it had to do with the holocaust and all this genocide and eugenics and stuff sterilization thousands of people millions of people whatever and that's like they don't even pay attention people just like believe the authorities or they don't have their own writings they need to write themselves yeah yeah uh put in a nutshell people just people believe the authorities and it doesn't seem to matter whether it's their child their toddler their brother or sister or mum yeah they don't even they don't even care if they are other people that laid them because they just believe the white coat thing yeah. they just think the authority is the source they only want certain sources they can't think for themselves or make their own sources Anyways, really, like, we need to make our own sources. It's because we don't have degrees behind our names. We could make our own stuff, our own theories and hypotheses and prove it. I understand, like, they claim in statistics and science you don't prove a hypothesis, but that's exactly what they do in science. They try, they try to go and prove something that they have an idea about. They don't just go on and try to do a bunch of experiments and see the conclusions from it. They yeah. go and they try to prove hypotheses. Yeah, but they know a lot of this they already knew from all the drugs and stuff anyway. They knew from rats and animals in the 60s and before that like serotonin drugs would um, would mess up those rats' um, social and sexual lives as adults irreversibly. Um, and that those are the overground ones. And there are obviously more underground studies that aren't published by this like whether it be drug companies or you know yeah they don't they're not required to show the trials were up failed they only yeah. required to post two that worked so if they had 14 that failed they don't have to post them yeah they can manipulate doctor the figures of the ones that they did post in any way you know because they use ghost writers to um, write the articles before the trials are even done anyway uh, yeah they already know what they're gonna try to prove and they try to prove it they're not 
doing the whole thing where they think, oh, maybe I don't have to prove it. They're trying to prove a hypothesis and their own idea. What the scientific theory is, make a hypothesis is just a question, but they're trying to prove a theory. They're trying to prove what they already want to have proven. Okay. They're not just ha coming up with a generalized question saying, what's the answer to the question? No, they come up with a hypothesis and they try to prove the hypothesis. They're not trying to see if it works against or for, and then they throw out anything like confirmation bias, anything that okay. wouldn't be for it. And so then that way they dictate what's supposed to be happening. But isn't it pretty damn clear that when the death rate, the self-death rate, I call it self-death, not the other word, because I think it's just weird when you call it, sounds like homicide. It's not really like murder or anything. I don't know. But it's like self-death, like our rates are higher than ever in 30 years. Yeah. And that's more mental health, more drugging, more all that stuff than ever before. They're screening on college campuses throwing people out in the psych wards like what they did with me or whatever and throwing them out suspending people they're putting it all in the news the news it's everywhere they believe in the mental illness thing all over this place and it's higher than ever before and then they claim oh it's prevented if their whole purpose and they that's how they keep with mental health by trying to prevent danger to self or others right but it's basic Sometimes facts, people. right? Like more, more of these drugs that c increase the same. I don't like the word suicide either. I hate that word. Yeah. It's not. I know. It's not just real. the eye part is weird. <laughs> I know. We all have a cho choice, choice, so and a right boring. to self determination for a start, and yeah. um, not to be judged whether that's a right or a wrong thing. Um, but <laughs> when it's induced by drugs, that's also not um, genuine to call it anything like that either it's not genuine to call it a choice of yourself either if someone gave you drugs and didn't tell you it's going to increase your suicide you, you you just would never take it if it's going to increase violence and you know like when yeah it's just basic math like you give people more of these drugs that cause this and have been shown to cause this the myth is that they prevent it and the myth is that it helps or alleviates or whatever but the the um the investigations as well as just the simple maths that the increase of them has led to the same increase in people dying so obviously yeah. taking those drugs is going to massively <laughs> that's where the math is the increase in taking those drugs is where it's happened simple math isn't it <laughs> i know it should be simple math but then there's no math to prove it there's no anti-psychology like organization there should be one but it's like I already oh yeah have to prove yeah yeah to, to prove that that whole the whole way people speak about it and the way they call it mental illness and way you don't get support from your family but then you have this other supposedly psychology thing where they um where the, that's not your family and don't really know or support you they're not there that you know they're doing a job and then they're breaking you down with this so-called psychotherapy stuff instead of building you up and taking you away from an, of the um, field to grow your confidence. They're taking you away from that <laughs> to break yeah, you down. Yeah, they're taking you away from confidence, not for it. And they claim they know all this stuff because that they're only the, the, they claim to be the only field that studies the brain. And so it must be something in the brain instead of the environment. Well, there's more to it than that. Like. They don't even talk about motivation or motives of people. There are other ologies out there. Yeah, yeah, there's neurology and stuff, isn't it? Anthropology wouldn't even... They'd yeah. be like, they're against anthropology, like cultural anthropology. It's like, total, like, they'd psych out those people in there, like, especially those African people. I remember that stuff. Or even the Papua New Guinea people, they'd psych them out and be like, they don't exist or whatever. So that Papua New Guinea stuff was gross, but it was like... They wouldn't exist. This one African verse, like they wouldn't even, they wouldn't exist as a nation or anything, like a culture. I don't even know if they still exist now because I know they're in Africa and they're in Asia. Apparently, ninety percent of the Asian ones don't use anesthetics, which I didn't even know. That's just creepy. But it's like for electric convulsive shock or something. But it's like it's all over the world, and then they claim, oh, they're the only ones who know what to do about people. Well, there are other things that know things. It doesn't have to be behavior science, like some kind of behavior stuff. 
It can be like your motivation of things, you know, your, it could be philosophical and philosophy. It's pretty much gone. Like we can learn about it in a logical philosophy class, but then they don't teach it in any other field, the philosophies. It's like they try to take them away and then they say, oh, it's a philosoph philosophical thought. And then they try to stick in the psychology and say it's psycho it's psychology, but it's not. It was phil philosophy before that. Like there's leadership and self fulfillment. What they did is they took self fulfillment and they call it self actualization or self realization. So they changed the word self fulfillment. And Ford wasn't even for self fulfillment anyways, and he's against it. So it was like came all the way from Aristotle and the Greeks and the idea that you should have feel feel fulfilled in what you're doing in life and have like a desire and passion. That's like all gone. And he's like, oh, that's not fair. It's like everyone just worships this Ford guy and all these other people. Will, what Ford? Like, like Ford this. Foundation. What? Oh, fraud. Oh, yeah, fraud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Freud. Yeah, Absolutely sorry. Absolutely named. <laughs> Freud or fraud, right? <laughs> 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 yeah. And that's how it works and they completely don't tell you I mean they tell you whether it be a psychiatrist or a psychoanalyst psychotherapist that, or someone that believes in mental health myths or whatever they'll tell you that they believe in this founding from the great for founding father of this not the real founding fathers of America um, Sigmund Freud you know the founding fathers of psychology or whatever Sigmund Freud is supposed to be the forebearer um, yeah. with one of his students being Carl Jung but they completely do not tell you all of these so called people telling you about Sigmund Freud totally don't tell you that he was on cocaine thinking cocaine was an antidepressant <laughs> he thought it was a wonder drug antidepressant and he spent yeah, I didn't even know that either yeah I can't even find that source like if someone told me that on it's the... on CNN <laughs> CNN wrote an article about it I'll show you <laughs> CNN right Sigmund Freud, Freud's con cocaine problem. CNN. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, funny. I'll have to look that up. And he didn't die a natural death either. He died a self-death. Well, it wasn't a self-death because he had to get his team of psychologists to euthanasia him. So he didn't die a natural death. And he well, didn't die a self-death either. <laughs> yeah, so it was assisted death. Yeah. <laughs> assisted self-death. <laughs> right. With drugs. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're doing now. They're trying to push that, and so it's even more. That's disgusting. I know, He's... right? You see, this this is a CNN article. This oh, it's on their website. Yeah, it's a CNN article. Yeah, he. I hate him. His whole thing about the sexual stuff was creepy. The sexual. Yeah, I know. Statement. I don't want to have sex with my mum. I mean, I'm old <laughs> enough and messed up enough for yeah, I can openly say creepy. that without. I think anyone yeah. would even think that. Like that's just creepy. I know. Anyway. He... It would be nice if he had left the depression to himself, do you know what I mean? Not telling everyone else who doesn't want to have sex with their mum, bringing like these ideas into their head that they don't want to think about at all. And just because someone is making you disgusted by something you don't want to think about, doesn't mean that you want to do it. <laughs> I know, I think Einstein not signing his Nobel Peace Prize was right, and Einstein's son was pretty much messed up because he kept studying how Ford was all into the son and the son and father relationship, and so he got really messed up over the son son father relationship thing and all into psychoanalysis and all that psychotherapy and stuff. Is that and, Einstein's son. Yeah, Einstein's son Edward Einstein. Like I wrote something about it, but he he like got permanently disabled over just like two years of being in a psych ward. And so he was like reduced to scribbles. He was given insulin shock, electric convulsive Damn. shock, and like stuck in this place. And it's still there, this Bengal Z or whatever it's called. Uh, very holesy, like place in Switzerland. But it was like, duh. Like he got permanently disabled. He gained weight. So all the way back in the freaking 30s, they knew people were gaining weight from this stuff. And they still try to ignore it like how many years now it's 80 years later they still try to pretend that nobody gains weight or has any yeah i know <laughs> it's due to other factors <laughs> it is not possibly yeah. due to the drug well how much mcdonald's did they have in the old asylums let's be honest <laughs> probably not very much <laughs> i know <laughs> 
They had the more like, Trazodol or whatever than they did years. McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, they show electric people dying after electric pulse shock or having terrible effects from it for like 80 years, and then they still try to pretend it's fine. Like, what the heck? They just totally yeah. ignore all the other evidence completely. It's Another so pathologized. So pathologized, yeah. like, well, if you're already messed up, I mean, you're already so <laughs> bad or whatever, like, Freud was getting up in the first place or whatever, all this depression, oh, it's terrible, this depression, you must think more about it and stuff. I know, it's like, think more about the weakness and make the weakness bigger and bigger, I feel the same way. Yeah, this way. is it's a great good. idea, <laughs> everybody <laughs> should do this, everybody should be aware of this, <laughs> mental health awareness. <laughs> I know, right? And the more they have awareness, the more people are dying. In yeah. fact, they put it on teens more, like African American teens or just teens in general, like in Utah too. But some of these things, they put more mental health on these people, more drugs, but only like 60% of it is drugs, and the other half is just mental health talking or counseling or whatever therapy stuff. And it's like they do that and they end up dying higher rates. More, higher rates of self death increases as a result. And it's like, don't they see the <laughs> outcomes of fine. anything? They don't even have any kind of like yeah. inspection of themselves or like not even like what do they call it? like that thinking afterwards of what I just did and like they have no thinking of anything, of any conclusions or results of what they're doing. They just believe so freaking so much that people are such a danger or something and they make up this danger thing like Italy doesn't have yeah, danger they don't want to deal with a problem themselves they're just like well we'll throw this person into this um, th this department deals with this kind of thing whereas uh, they don't want to they don't want to ask them how are they doing what else could they do to like build confidence or something it's just like no, nope, yeah. you have to go to the mental health department, <laughs> and they're doing yeah. it really a lot, like with this science or behavioral, behavioral uh, yeah. services, social engineering. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All that stuff. They just throw them in a department, think they know it, but they don't know it. So they're just like they're in this freaking formulaic thing. They're taught at work. These emergency health people are like taught at work that they're supposed to stick people of erratic behavior or whatever in a psych ward or something or if they always ask these stupid questions in the ER like do you want to harm yourself or others or anything it's like ridiculous it's not your business if I want to harm myself or others or it's like and what kind of harm is it like that can be totally skewed around too like oh you want yeah, to defend yourself those that would be against others yeah the questions don't really make much sense because if I do want to um, not be here off this planet I'm definitely not going to tell a nurse in a hospital when she asks me that but if I do want them to take me somewhere look after me give me food and drugs or whatever if I feel in like that then I can say yeah I do and I know that they'll give me food and drugs and you know like um, I'll be I'll be so called receiving help <laughs> Yeah. That's I'm... really what they're asking. Do you want help? And obviously what they mean by help is drug you, kill you, and put you mm -hmm. in a place, yeah, give you food sure. and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's not help at all. Take help care of you. Like... <laughs> yeah, help is more like, it's like a creepy when they keep saying people need help. It's like when they say help, to me, it immediately is transferred. Do you need to help? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's same like, in a shop. Know? They shop... We're in a shop, yeah, where they think someone's going to steal something or you don't they don't want someone in their shop. They'll go up to you and they say, can I help you? And they don't really mean, can I help you? Yeah, exactly. They mean, what are you doing in my shop? I don't want you in my shop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What are you doing they here? They want to change their behavior, their way they're acting, and so they're like, they need help or they need to get off the streets or some weird thing. Yeah, I so considerate. It's, it's not help at all. It's like, People think, oh, I'll, I'll promote this hotline and it's helping people, but it's not helping at all because all they do is transfer them to mental health and that's not helping at all. Like, I always knew that anyways, but it's even more stronger since I'm a victim and stuff. Now I actually know, like, I know the stuff that others don't know. But it's like... Yeah, it makes your life nothing. Your life is worthless and nothing. Once you put all that stuff on it, 
they can do whatever they can take away this destroy your life in this way drug away whatever harms it doesn't matter what age you are like they can just take it all from you and then they've always got the this excuse that you're a non-human you know that they got this ulterior excuse that doesn't exist in the real world called mental health or something they bring the non-human part with danger to self or others if you're any kind of danger to yourself or others they make you not human apparently or you're like you're um, you're defunct you're not even worth the same as other people you're a defunct person yeah. and it just make it up like they just make up the stuff and like everything is psychosis or everything is sadness yeah. they say one thing or everything's bipolar or something it's like ridiculous like you say anything about mood then all obviously then it's going to be bipolar depression you say you're sad oh it's that oh, you're saying this or that, you want to do this or that, oh, it's bipolar because you're getting angry or whatever over you getting locked up in a psych ward. It's, like, ridiculous. It's made They're to totally people... detached from reality. They're, like, judging yeah, other people for being detached, detached from reality when they are detached from reality, judging people for being <laughs> detached from reality. Like, that's what they're doing. <laughs> They're so yeah, detached they're, they're from all, reality while they're, they're doing the that. The mental health stuff, they're, it's like they're on their own mentions in those psych wards. It's not even like reality. Locking people up in a place and then giving them all this internaliz- internalization, like therapy stuff to make them think it's all in their head and like you can't even crawl out of your own skull. Or they give you coloring books and think that's the helpful to give you a stupid coloring book or make you fill out little chart things it's stupid it's really degrading and stupid like you can't even use technology you can't use computers you can't take photos you can't talk to anyone on the outside world you have to somehow have memorized their number or they only will contact your relatives they pretty much just want to talk to your relatives or your guardians or whatever they never want you to be independent. They require you to go outside to some person. Yeah, your property. Like, <laughs> and people have yeah. uh, allowed you to be property of that place. Yeah, but then they're like, they require you to talk to your relatives and stuff. And it's like, those could be the people like abusing you or something. And then they require you to talk to them. And they're just going to say, uh, really abusive ones would just say you're mental and stuff right to try to make you get help or something but it's really just disgusting like get out of my way exactly it's like you just want them to get rid of you it's like get help like get rid of you it's not anything like real help people some people are like oh no you know you can talk to me well no one's going to talk to you because all the people who are going to be you know wanting to die or whatever they're not going to be talking to you because they're going to be stuck with mental health people and stuck in psych wards involuntarily or stuck on drugs and told to talk to all these mental health people they're not going to talk to you with their friends they're not going to talk to their friends they're going to just talk to these professional people it's like so that's where they all disappear like you don't see them yeah, <laughs> yeah that's where real support <laughs> has disappeared yeah. too <laughs> The... Yeah, cut up all your, cut off all your friends and make you isolated and make you totally dependent on mental health professionals. That's awful. And tell you to oh to refer them all to hotlines or refer them to mental health professionals instead of each other. Like they don't tell teach people how to you know have empathy or support people and be real friendships like a real like buddy system like thing. They don't even teach people how to do that. They're just like oh go and give it to a professional and they know. They don't. They try to make it seem like, oh, it's abnormal to want to die or something, or it's abnormal to get angry over anything, or it's abnormal to fidget or anything, just anything like, or protest anything. Yeah. Like it's all just erratic behavior or something weird, and so they just try to make it seem like, oh, you gotta go talk to those people. You can't talk to friends. You can't be different. You can't be against the status quo. It's mental hygiene. At the end of the yeah, day, it's, if you want to believe in the word mental or whatever, but it is I just... I just want, like, one world, one personality to rule or something. It's like, what personality rule? Oh, the one who doesn't care about anything, who never gets stressed out. Oh, the personality that's just happy and docile and stupid, you know, basically. You yeah, have that's to what be they stupid. turn you into. But think of what <laughs> Albert Einstein's son could have been. Like, he probably inherited some good like things he learned from him be it genetically or environmentally uh, yeah. he could have been a 
Um, he could have been uh, he, he could have been really really smart and creative and showed a lot of other people things I mean that's what used to happen before yeah he was playing the piano one time and then he couldn't do that anymore but he was just, he wanted to be a psychiatrist himself so he got early oh, yeah. on psych stuff <laughs> his, his mother was in the psych stuff too like she would even and her, her his aunt died like a self death kind of thing from being stuck in psych ward, so his mother's family was all into the psych stuff. And so he got it early on, like all that psych language and all that, wanting to be a psychiatrist himself, and then he ends up getting fucked up right over it. And he doesn't even realize it, but his whole relatives were all into it and like thinking, oh, it's all good, and then they end up dying and getting worse and disabled. It's like ridiculous. And then Einstein, he wasn't into psychoanalysis, like he was trying to not doing it and he wouldn't sign off for his award but then he also said s some terrible things like oh he thought it was genetic oh because because of his wife or whatever thinking that whole side gave it to him but it's like it wasn't that it was environment like it was the psychotherapy and all the psych stuff the obsession over the son and the father stuff and all this weird stuff like you know it just makes you never like how Einstein says it makes it psychoanalysis makes it so you can never extricate yourself extricate yourself from your own head you can't extricate yourself from psychoanalysis at least that's what they try to do it unless you're rebellious like us people like us are rebellious and question authority but a lot of people they can't even get out of it they're not smart enough they just can't even think about it and they can't get out of it they're just stuck in this thing and there's zombie like I just listen to the authority because I have to, or maybe, you know, they also try to force you to give up and listen to them so you can't do anything anymore. But it's, like, ridiculous. Like, yeah, he could have been a way better person. His other, like, siblings were pretty fine. Like, I think they were fine. But it's, like, he gets disabled and gets overweight, and he, like, can only write scribbles and talk slowly and all messed up like he was stuck in there forever like I think just over like two years but I think he did get out but it was like he was ruined and stuff it was just I don't know as you said like people can get it's nature versus nurture and they don't want to make everything nature now everything's just nature instead of nurture but it's like one nature like what is it and it's just ridiculous it's just out of control how they just want to just ruin everyone and no one talks about it like you'll say it or you'll write it online people don't even get it like they don't even think it's a real legitimate issue it's like you need to make an issue just because we don't have degrees or huge names but if you're getting a degree or something like that and you're you're going to get taught all of that language and you're going to think that it's right because you're eventually you just stop arguing with what you're learning and stuff unless you drop out or something and so how do you get legitimacy? Well, you get legitimacy from just having experiences and being a victim, I think, should give you legitimacy. I think we talked about that before, but it's like, why do you have to be a professional to have legitimacy? Like, you're a real person, it's a real source, and then they're like, oh, where did you get that source from? People will be like asking. Yeah, them. experts in Glaxo and Pfizer, sure. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> They, they think don't. it is expert, though, because they're a big corporation or something, instead of just one person. Yeah. It's they don't works. know how SSRI work or whatever. They don't know. They can't. Um, they don't know how these drugs work. They don't know what to do when things. They don't even know how to taper off of them. <laughs> they don't even have guidelines for tapering off of these drugs that are addictive, that change mm -hmm. that change your brain and make you go through withdrawals and stuff. They they totally don't even know can't explain how they work or don't work yeah a lot of times they're like they claim they don't know like the FDA was claiming they didn't know what happened with electroshock but then they had all the evidence of people dying and people can even die with one shock thing and stuff it's like ridiculous like they're just yeah. they just make it up as they go along like they can't really explain to you I mean I'm sure the way they explained it would have been pretty ridiculous like oh okay ECT helps because it um it uh what how what the electric shocks um the, i don't know they probably say something like it magically rewires the brain or something crazy yeah they try to make it like it was in the 30s they were doing it then and uh 
Clementine Clementine Churchill had it, and what they told them in the 30s was that it would somehow affect the chemical imbalance in the brain. And they still do that now, right? They think, oh, it would yeah. somehow shocks to your brain is going to affect chemicals. No, shocks doesn't affect chemicals. This is ridiculous. And How I old still was she when she got that? Because you know Winston Churchill was a big eugenicist, right? He was pushing for the sterilization laws more than anybody else. Other people actually had to stop him. Because he's, you know, our famous general. There's statues of him everywhere here. It's really annoying. Because he, he gave some good speeches. Yeah, um, he did. We know about him. Yeah. You're, you're quite knowledgeable. Uh, it's a shame there isn't more like us that aren't just like, yes, give me my zombie medication. <laughs> Please kill me and give me burgers and cook me meals and I smoke cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? You're just content with nothing in your life. That's pretty hard. That's why obviously people, are, the self-death rate is going higher because you take away people's passion, their self-defense. It takes away their self-defense. There's no such thing as self-defense in psycho language or psycho babble. They say nothing about self-defense because, oh, if you self-defend yourself, you could be a harm to others or something. You can't yeah, yeah, they're probably pathologize that, that as some like problem, like oh, why do you feel the need to defend yourself? And it's like yeah, exactly, it's something wrong with my you. My sperm it's... did not think that. <laughs> 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 my sperm didn't didn't do that. <laughs> you know, yeah. like say that to a dog that's fighting for its life or protecting its children. Yeah. Like it doesn't think about that. <laughs> yeah, just survival instinct. It's like taking away people's survival instinct. Literally, it takes away, like, that was one of the pictures there, it was like, takes how modern life removes survival instinct, well, you do that with psychology and mental health, it removes your survival instinct in every single way, it makes you think unnaturally, like, it's natural to want to defend yourself, it's natural to feel, like, terrible after a terrible event and stuff, and it's natural to miss people and grieve for people your entire life, even. Yeah, it's and totally it's natural, they've actually put time limits and everything on this stuff. <laughs> I know, right? They put time limits and grieving on people who die. I remember seeing that the first time in fall 2014. I started, like, then I heard boundaries and I figured out what boundaries were. I never thought about boundaries before. It just didn't make sense to me. I was trusting and I'd tell lots of information if somebody asked me. Like, I mean, of course, I would keep to myself as well, but when I started typing online, I, I give a lot for, I would give a lot more information online. I got a cell phone and stuff and I was like, then I was giving lots of info to people I hadn't met before or anything. And it's like, so that's mean you're taking away your boundaries and you're becoming close to people. The only way you can become close to people is to take away your boundaries. And then they start teaching all this weird stuff about boundaries. And I was like, what? I hate boundaries. I'm not in defenses. And I just was totally <laughs> yeah. everything they were teaching. And then they also taught this stupid cycle stuff of grieving and stuff. It's like, oh, and then you have to get over the grieving. It's only like a short time. No, you can. I was like fighting that too, because I think you could grieve over someone who's dead or be angry about it or deny it your entire life that they're gone. And you still miss them and stuff. But just because then it's like ruining people who want to grieve over people, just ruining empathy and altruism. And it yeah. ruins personal or passion passion doesn't exist <laughs> yeah i it's... know and we we evolve we're innate beings like we are creative our, our purpose is like we <laughs> learn and evolve that's our strength that's how we like came to make stuff and 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 overcome and work together and stuff like we evolve we in our um, yeah. i don't mean like genetically we evolve into this animal i mean we uh we <laughs> realistically <laughs> do things to um to change our environments yeah like, we adapt to things it's natural and then yeah, it's that's natural. why it was so it was so easy for me to do psycho babble stuff in school like i hated it but it was so easy for me because it just was like of course a person reacts a certain way but you're actually wrong there's way more styles of parenting no they're not disease but of course they react this way it's natural but it's even more intense and it was just so easy like I get over 100% or high A with almost no work at all like it just was so freaking easy to me it's like the easiest class ever for me this is just like makes sense you know people react a certain way but it's not a disease and I was like always arguing with them and like this is so stupid it's not just disease like you know I have kinesthesia like different 
different feelings or touches but it's not just that of course you recognize people's faces and stuff and you can't recognize it but it's like they make everything a disease and that stupid thing where they claim right brain or left brain it's like stupid too it's not just right brain or left brain it's the whole brain i was like yeah no. yeah i think that about using all your brain you know where people say oh imagine what we could do if we used 100 percent of your brain and it's like why would you want to use the part that's supposedly for like pooing as the same type of one that's supposedly used for talking you know yeah, you might and it might not be a good idea to use both of them at the same time <laughs> yeah that's true right you might actually think about doing something be... I know. talk about twisting logic <laughs> i know right it's just ridiculous and they just like it's just stupid and i remember there's this one person they tortured this like girl on la she was like they found her like stuck to a toilet and stuff in her room and locked up there for years and had to grow up like that and then they sat there and they studied her and so she never recovered or anything because they kept studying her and giving her flashcards and stuff it was just stupid and it was like they turned her into a total experiment over it and they also have these stupid little things like they claim this guy got oh this is where lobotomy came from they this guy got a hole through his brain and that's like apparently on wikipedia i saw it's incorrect where lobotomy came from but it was like then they claim oh that's where lobotomy came from is from that guy oh okay no it's not it ruined his brain to get caught up like that it's not a good thing and somehow that's supposed to inspire something like cutting up people's brain when the person got disabled and ruined that's yeah yeah it's like all these inspirations from these people is from negative stuff and from terrible reactions to things Maybe yeah they you're... totally d done the they said oh no this person is terrible they come like they're coming back with shell sh what they'd call mm -hmm. shell shock syndrome or whatever huh? um, pathologizing yeah they'd call it things like this right and they'd be like they couldn't handle that this person was just having a natural learning response that yeah. might you know that they'll probably get through after a while and come out as a different maybe stronger adapted in ways person with other yeah. human beings showing them affection and love and you know sub, um, back to a reality that they can use that that uh -huh. use use their um use what they've um what they've experienced or whatever on the on the other side if you want to call it the other side because there's no such thing as the other side um, yeah. they just cut their, their they the straight away they cut their brains out and said oh isn't this brilliant like they didn't obviously didn't leave them very long to come through their experience <laughs> yeah i know how much better is it now that they're not like freaking out for or like they're not they're not doing something that is socially abnormal it's like give them a break they just got back from a war zone <laughs> how kind of socially yeah. normal do you want them to be instantaneously <laughs> yeah they just want people to adhere to norms or not do taboo things well what's wrong with doing taboo things it's just totally fine because oh it's not structured and organized oh you can't do taboo things at work because they'll fire you whatever but it's ridiculous like you know i just feel like the whole genetic thing too like what happened to all those people that were messed up with psych and stuff they're rebellious they're rebel risers and everything like so they're not existing because i just sit in the store i was like just looking at people people are just so docile like they don't even argue about anything they don't care about anything they just want to buy their items and i was never somebody who's like super into buying items and stuff it's just kind of boring to me so it's <laughs> yeah. just like <laughs> they're just so like docile and like just want to buy items and stuff but it's like okay they don't think about anything on a bigger scale or whatever they get mad over the computer thing not working but it's like <laughs> you know we're just created to be docile people just in the organized structure and stuff you know you don't question anything you don't make movements or anything you can't get people together to do anything it's just ridiculous you know like yeah, you can't get people okay. together to do anything, let alone help people instead of uh, giving them drugs and saying they're mentally ill or whatever. I know, real help would be self-sufficient and empowering and more independent and defensive. Like, having self-defense and having rights, like right to privacy, right to your own body, right to movements and all those things. That's why the bills of rights were created, but it is even more intense. There's natural rights, like John Locke said, like no government or person can say what it is. 
Magna Carta and all that stuff, like that makes a person feel much better than having being said that they're ill and that they have no abilities and no self control because it's an imbalance. So everything's in a balance now. So everything that they just did, it's like saying that everything they just thought and whatever they did is just a lie. Like everything now is an imbalance and it's a, just a disease. So everything they thought, the reasons they had for anything that they did, it just was gone. Like you'll see those weird articles like WP and stuff. This guy who was kicked out of Princeton and like had to go back and he tried to like sue them all by himself against three different Princeton lawyers. It was like... And then they tried to say, like, he didn't even know afterwards getting stuck in a psych ward and everything. He didn't even know the reason why he wanted to die in the first place. It was like they didn't give any, they didn't figure out any of the reasons why the people want to do anything. And I always want to know why. Like, I think that's the greatest part to start with someone is to ask why. It starts all at why, not how or what or anything. It just starts at why, and he, like, they just totally, he didn't even know why he even wanted to do it in the first place, that he wanted to die. Or he thought it was just some stupid thing, like, oh, something was late or something. Or just some stupid little thing, and, like, he doesn't even know why. Are you serious? And that's what you're posting it on a news article, and he went through the psych ward and all that stuff, and he doesn't even know why he wanted to die. It was just, like, stupid. Like, yeah. You know how you know, effective the drugs are? Yeah, I know, there's always a reason, they're just getting rid of the reasons, like, oh, I have depression uh, or whatever. I don't know about know, over there, but over why. here, well, um, the benefits and welfare and dependency system, which is important, like, people need a safety net if they're out of work yeah, or, you know, you know if they I can't see, I cope. I mean, like, yeah, it's <laughs> important, but it's so intrinsically tight, which is going to be tough, I'm, like, I'm, we're humans, like, we I think we can defeat this genocidal bullshit. I mean, we can. Yeah. And but um, currently, as it stands, it's going to be one of the obstacles. Is that over here, the um, the me, the so-called mental health thing is so intrinsically linked with uh, benefits and welfare system. Mm -hmm. and genocide. Yeah, is, genocide is bigger than that. At the end of the day, what it comes down to, genocide is bigger than that. But um, it's going to be a tough barrier to, to bulge because it's so intrinsically linked to people's uh, physical immediate survival in terms of roof over their head, um, food, mm. and um, you know maybe their not immediate ability to deal and get um, hold down a job and stuff. So it's it's so if they start mm -hmm. saying you know uh, it's not mental illness then the um, benefits people will be the welfare system will s not support not support people. Yeah, they need. Why are they even? I think it's stupid that they require people to be disabled and messed up to give them welfare. That's stupid. Like they should just have a certain income like requirement and then that's it. Like. Why do they make it so you have to be disabled? I think it's disgusting to force disability on people just to them so they could survive. And then they're like, then you have to go for so freaking. They look at every single thing you do in your attitude, especially customer service ones like mine, like minimum wage. They totally look at everything you do. You mess up one single day. Like I was, I guess, yelling or I wasn't even yelling really, I was just ranting and stuff and cussing and stuff. and just because you do that one day because you're agitated, created agitation because people are just swerving back and forth and it was bothering me and stuff was like, my opinion hacked on my computer and stuff even later, but it was just like, you know, it was just ridiculous, like how you can just agitate a person a single day and they lose their job right then and there and then they can't get benefits. They won't allow me to get unemployment benefits because, oh, it was against the public or something because I was yelling or I was cussing and stuff, they wouldn't allow me to get benefits. It was like, they call it misconduct or something, but it's just like, that's just ridiculous to do that to people and force them to be disabled, so then they'll voluntarily take illnesses and stupid things like that and ruin themselves, create permanent disability instead of work on school, like, oh, kick them out of school instead of letting them stay in school and stuff, and oh, kick them out of these different fields and these careers and things. Instead of like working with them, introducing yeah, well, instead of working with people and introducing them to where it be, we we're social creatures. So really, obviously, everything that's done is to um, by the royals and elites and stuff is to bash us on the head. You know, like um, 
to to to, to soften us to soften us up psychotherapy is to soften us up and so yeah, is all the technology it makes you weaker like i remember listening to it, it soften you up you... for drugs especially one yeah. of the things that will soften you up for is drugs and you'll be more accepting for drugs as well yeah you just take whatever you take you don't question authority you don't defend yourself or anyone else either you don't question anything you don't defend anything you don't question the world you just become a slave like a mind slave person and that's exactly what it does it makes you weaker and less defensive and less resilient and that's exactly why people are dying more as a rate and well i think what they need to look at but yeah i know what you're saying about the welfare thing i see that problem too because this one guy he claimed as a target individual and stuff but he claimed he hears voices and stuff and he says oh because you hear voices then you get automatic welfare and stuff and it's like once you're diagnosed schizo but he doesn't do the drugs or anything but it's like and then he would stop talking to me like i guess he blocked me it looked like but i was like you can't say mental illness and stuff and believe all this stuff and everything is like his mental disability but he's on ssi and stuff he can't hold down a job because of voices or whatever and he claims it's because it's the government doing it to him electrical signals but it's like the stupidest thing ever like you know because oh you can't hold down a job so then you've got to stick on this some disability thing why do they even do that like they're obviously there are homeless people all over the world even in europe and stuff and they don't have like they don't they're not claiming disabilities like this homeless person rejected the ambulance from out of a place and they could have been tortured in the ambulance and stuck on a cycle or something and it's like this one person is homeless yeah, too. Yeah, we all need we all need you know basic things to survive. But more importantly, like it is as um, social creatures with actual other human beings and support and stuff and working together, we don't need any of that. We can overcome amazing things, whether you hear voices or or whatever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? You don't have to like. Why do you have to call yourself this? disabled or whatever just because you hear stuff and you can't work like why do you have to be disabled maybe For drugs, you know, it's a drug industry mo mo yeah, mostly it's a drug industry it's also social control like psyops and stuff like the government the u.s government spells one billion dollars in just psychology research and stuff and they go uh, do all this oh, yeah. stuff that's where the think tanks i don't know if you know like um the opera of the um a lot of psychological you see the way they've set up the whole world is a social experiment so um yeah. this whole mental health whatever <laughs> no no it's it's real paranoia it's real <laughs> like the think about it the people who want to control the <laughs> I world know, but right the people say it's paranoia like i i get i get violent yeah. thoughts when i'm in a psych ward too that probably doesn't help me very much but it's like I just don't people are tra people drugging you do you know what i mean like they are coming inside your body and violating you. I mean, yeah, um, it might it, <laughs> it might make you violent. <laughs> They're it violating does. you. Sorry, They're being violent work, to like, you. I never had so many problems before. Like, I never got. I never had so many violent thoughts or just angry all the time and stuff. Like, I I got that after the psych wars and the psych stuff because they took away my rights and they like lock you up and then they try to tell you you're all wrong and everything you do it makes you more want to harm people more often like more so so when they have all those shootings and stuff like i totally get it like i sort of did before and thought it was the drugs and stuff but it's not just the drugs like you don't even have to be on drugs and do it people no, who you, you actually don't have to yeah. although the drugs directly <laughs> cause like anyone just the drugs alone cause huge increases in like people doing these things um, they've proved you that many, many a time. Though. You could but just no, you don't have to be. <laughs> Considering yeah. those kind of situations and the way it messes messes with people. You, I know. Uh, like you don't even for the psycho babble stuff, I thought, oh, they're probably on drugs and stuff. But I didn't realize there's also therapy and the psych stuff itself, like what they're yeah. teaching. And now I know it a lot on a deeper level. But like all those people, they're not even on the drugs anymore. But maybe they were drugged once. Or they had psychotherapy or whatever they had saw. All yeah, psychotherapy people. could make you do almost anything. Yeah. I mean, you're twisting the yeah. brain at the end of the day. Yeah, and so then they go out and attack people. It's like, well, now I totally get it and stuff. They're victims. Like, they're created to be like that. They didn't have all those shootings before. And then they they, they only have that involuntary take away your gun 
law since the 60s, but they've had so many more shootings pointlessly since then, and more mental health and more, like, all that stuff, more so, and so I just know it's because they're taking away the defense of the people and they're ruining them. Like, it does. It makes you want to strike out of people when someone comes over there and says they want to take total control of you and what you're supposed to doing and everything in your belief system it and take away your rights it really makes you want to harm people more often it's like oh they want to prevent people becoming more dangerous but they're actually causing it it's like the opposite it's the stupidest thing ever it's like a circle it's like a terrible circle and cycle that they create and they they're like all in the cycles and stuff but they're creating the cycles <laughs> oh yeah the cycles <laughs> Yeah, they're like in a circle. They're just creating their own problem. They're like, they oh, don't have a concept of recovery. They might occasionally use the word recovery, but they don't have an actual concept of that. Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure they don't. Um, they say once you have a mental illness or whatever, you know, then your mental for life, your mental illness yeah. is for life, and your medications are for life. And yeah, <laughs> they don't really have a concept of anything else. <laughs> Well, they try to scar people for life by putting them in all that psych stuff, like the stuff that they say and taking your rights and stripping your clothes off, all that stuff and cutting off your communication. It's a horrible, horrible thing. It's like you're in jail, but even worse jail because like jail, you know, you did something wrong and it was your yeah, own yeah. act and they try to make it seem like you're just a abominable human, lower than human, like you're even worse than your own actions, like you had perfect responsibility over your own actions now you have no action you're just a thing like take away all your clothes like you don't even take away clothes like it's just creepy like it's worse than prison it's just worse like this is a terrible thing and then you have to go on a life like thinking oh well at least someone like me anyways i have to try to pretend it never happened but then it did it's like terrible like i have to go in the public and stuff and I'm starting to feel anger, like, and stuff, and I never did that before, because like, I had tons of volunteering, and I went to school and stuff, I never withdrew, I never, like, if I stopped volunteering, I, like, quit or something, I was never fired or anything, but it was, like, I just feel the anger and stuff, and the stuff that happened to me and stuff, it's just, it's difficult, it makes it difficult talking to people, like, and then inside you're You haven't been through that, saying, people yeah. haven't been through that, and... Like you, you begin, you lack empathy in some ways because you yeah. know there's these arsehole going around doing that, telling people, talking about people always talking about mental health, whatever, and then they no one cared about you in in that way that like they're doing this to people, and they absolutely didn't care about you. Like pretty much all the people around are okay with this, and it's like yeah. it didn't happen to them. It happened to they done it to you, and no one seems to care about it. Yeah, they think it's, oh, total, right, oh, they think they're preventing death. They're not preventing death because there's never been another field. I think there really needs to be a motivationology and there need to be people like us, like, going out there and making organizations, not like ones that are just against forced treatment. Like, I think that's a good idea, but ones that are against mental health and stuff and that come around and say your alternative to prevent death and to bring people upward. Like, you can bring people upward for so more train them upward than with mental health stuff is training them downward obviously why would you make people get on benefits and be permanently disabled like that's not a good thing who wants to be disabled like you want to be enabled and do things and go for dreams and go for hopes and stuff you don't want to lose your hopes and dreams and become hopeless and they're taking away people's hopes and dreams and their self-fulfillment i think self-fulfillment matters i don't care if i'm the one of four people who like that on Facebook. But I think it matters, like, having achieving things and dreams and all that stuff. Like, oh, It's part of our nature. Yeah. We learn how to, we needed to cross a bridge. We build yeah. things usually together to cross that bridge. We need to catch yeah. an animal. We catch that animal. You know what I mean? It's part, like, that's yeah, what we're supposed to do. Creativity <laughs> or anything, you're just supposed to go through the hoops and everything like just like a zombie robot never want to create or innovate or do anything i mean they claim that only 2.6 percent of people want to innovate but you want to take away all the innovation all those people stop all of them from doing anything it's just ridiculous you never get anywhere how's this progress to have people getting shocked brains like that was inspired from shocking pigs in a slaughterhouse and stuff and people are like it's not like shocking pigs 
there's anesthetics and stuff, but it's the same freaking deal. And somehow they claim, oh, they want to claim that shocking a person is going to change their chemical biology. No, that has nothing to do with anything. You put liquid next to electricity, it doesn't change the chemicals in the liquid. Like, do you even take freaking chemistry? Like, you could put electricity in a freaking liquid, it's not going to change the molecules of the liquid. There'll still be a liquid. Like, it's just stupid. Yeah. I'd love to be able to help people more. I, I mean, or create some kind of community. That it's obviously the environments to create community are pretty tough um, in the current day. You know, that's not what the controllers want, like our royal elitists or whatever that want to control their their property. We are their property. They, you know, the royal subjects. Yeah, slaves. They see the whole world, yeah, as their subject ro um, slaves royals their <laughs> ants you know the word serve ants it yeah, actually like says serve ants <laughs> 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 that, that, that's how they <laughs> see us so they definitely don't want us to be forming communities and um and helping each other and taking away their drug trade control stuff but um the main reason that um I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do. I, I'm doing certain things, but um, how how much I'll be able to be like actually get a community thing going is um, is limited. I have no desire now. The 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 drugs they came and they control my desire. You know the numbness that you get on the drugs. Yeah, it's a total zombie and numbness. You don't care about anything. You're like yeah, I've got that forever it. now. Apart no. from like them taking my sexuality, the doctors are now right. They control my sexuality forever. <laughs> yeah. For as long as I'm alive, the rest of what is supposed to be my life is not my life. Like they're saying when I when I should be having an arousal, uh, an erection, they're saying, nope, you're not going to have that now. They're like controlling it, and that's like a really important part of my life. <laughs> You know, my sexuality is not negotiable, it's not controllable, it's not there to be violated. But they've gone and done that forever, and I am going to have to live in this prison till I die. Like, that's not my life. Like, where is my, you know, my life? How dare they tell my, my erections to not be allowed to be there? How dare they control that for the rest of my life? They, they, they knew this was like a thing, but they, they think they... They didn't think I had the right to know yeah, take or all your rights. It's or like you're no living an ultimate yeah. quality. But it's ruined my desire. Most people have emotional numbness with it, and it usually gets worse the more you have, the longer you, that you have to live like this. It's totally unnatural. But um, uh, the the emotional numbness, people actually describe that as even worse. They, um, it seems to be the similar kind of brain damage. But I've lost my desire totally. I, one of the reasons I don't die is that it will be that's what they they want you know it'll be yeah it'll be, it's a total defeat that's they want you to yeah. die and shut up and not fight anymore and complain about them what they exactly. did exactly it'd be permitting kind of consenting permitting what they done it would be unjustified mm -hmm. for me to like yeah like not complain and go away just to, just it would... Yeah, that's why they tell people to die, like, kill themselves, like, horrible, terrible bully people, or, it's so stupid, like, oh, bully is nothing, but harassers, oppressors, that's why they want people to kill themselves, so they shut up and go away, like, they don't want them to speak for themselves, or speak for other people, or against the wrongs that they caused, you know, they just want them to shut up and go away, and that's yeah, why they especially can't. psychiatrists. <laughs> Especially psychiatrists want yeah, people to shut yeah. up and go away. Solved. We don't want to know about how this harmed you because this religion cult of medications that I've been drug dealing to, <laughs> it's hundreds of thousands yeah, they don't of years, my livelihood. They how want dare you challenge my livelihood of drug dealing and killing people? How dare yeah, you challenge how could you it? Do that, right? How could you want to how take could you do that? <laughs> livelihood, right? You want to make them? Oh yeah, you make all these people disabled and lose their lives well what about you why don't we make you disabled and lose your job so you have i was to a child like here. who should be living with this like i was a child <laughs> the people that done it those those so-called lying doctors or whatever that are calling them disingenuously medications 
this is this is really high like they know they're drug dealing and pre they're lying they're like they say they told they told my parents things like um um you will will take them off the drugs or they'll tell them things like um like we're the experts we're the professionals we know about these things you know obviously the expert people that are trying to help wouldn't give you dangerous drugs would they like you you trust doctors and they're not experts and professionals that's a lie for a start because the, the, all they're doing is coming from the drug companies they're not like coming from basically they're more in the know and they lied and coerced they use lies and coercion every step of the way and you trust them because they're doctors yeah they just say they're a certain degree and then you have to ask they require all these legal legalese like oh you have to go to a psychiatrist or something get a legal diagnosis and they can only have one for a full ward or whatever, and you just have that one for like five minutes, and they just write on their stupid signature. And that's all they require, their stupid signature. And then meanwhile, you have to listen to your fucking therapist like 24 fucking times a day or something, and just over and over, and it's just stupid. Like, shut up. I don't want to listen to this. Get kicked out. I got kicked out over and over. Like, I can't even do it, though. I can't reverse train people. How can you reverse train a whole bunch of people when you're not given any credibility and you're, you're told to shut up and then only the psychotherapist people can talk the whole time and everything and their stupid psychobabble with their charts and their stuff. Make your, You can't make your own charts and your own theories. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> Ugh. It's like you can't reverse train them and get them out of their thinking. You can protest all the time and look like you're a total, like, Look like make yourself look like you're going through psychosis or bipolar because you protest everything or whatever, but it's just like stupid. Like, yeah. be like saying all this stuff is terrible and everything and just makes no sense. This isn't motivationology, this isn't anything, and people don't know what motivationology is, but I'd like to create it about motivation. I think it would be a good alternative to psychobabble. I know I meditation has yeah. helped and stuff, things like meditation has helped. Um, bearing through the withdrawal of the drugs help because the, the withdrawal of the drugs induce like medication mm -hmm. in, withdrawal induced psychosis and all this stuff <laughs> it, it induced that so I had to know that um, this is definitely the drugs causing this and but the main thing I knew I have to stay out of a mental place while I'm going through withdrawal induced psychosis <laughs> I have to stay out of a mental place and get the hell through it and you know I'll eventually I'll uh, it will go away, and it did yeah, it after like two years. <laughs> really mood swings. Yeah, there's the 